Nearly 20 years ago, JBL and Crown introduced the world's most powerful two-channel car amplifier, the A6000 GTI. Today we have the new two-channel powerhouse. Let's see what it's all about. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle lot, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried. In when you see these massive cardio systems like JP's Tahoe, hair blowing bass, massive subwoofers, there are mids and highs in these cars that need to be powered as well. What about an amp for those? Well, back in the day, the Crown A6000 GTI by JBL was the Mac Daddy amp. Now, this amp cost $6,000 in 2004, which is equivalent to around $9,700 in 2023. The Down for Sound JP32.2 is $849, and we're going to take a closer look today, including the rated power, 4 ohms 1200 by 2, 2 ohms 2000 by 2, 1 ohm 3200 by 2, or bridged 4000 at 4 ohms, or 6000 at 2 ohms. Let's find out more about this beast. Inside the box includes the owner's manual for the JP32.2 specifically, goes over all the features and settings. And of course, we have two of Alan's keys. Hey Alan, look at this. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! Also included the base remote cable, which is the Cat6 style here. Stays nicely connected to the amp. And of course, the awesome base remote. The Down for Sound is perfected over the years, which includes power, protect, clipping, temperature, volume, voltage, everything that you need, and a bass knob. And for those who don't know, the little hole in the bottom, that's for adjusting your voltage to match your system. So here is the amp, beautiful red, the JP32.2, largest two-channel amp down for sound cells and probably one of the largest two-channel amplifiers available in 2023. Has the box with the fancy designs and all the graphics by Jacob Scott. And here you can see... The amplifier has the same look as a lot of the other ones. The dimensions are 19.7 inches in length, 9.4 inches in width, and 2.7 inches in height. There's also the millimeter equivalents there for those outside the U.S. The SAMP is beef. It has two zero-gauge inputs for power and ground. It also has eight-gauge connections for your speaker outputs. This is a stereo amplifier. It can work in two-channel or bridged mode, and we'll show both of those when we get to the test. On the opposite side, we have the standard connections that most of the newer Down for Sound amps have, which are the Tiffany style RCA ins and outs. Also the high pass filter and a low pass filter, which is kind of unique for this one. It can be band pass as well. Has power and protect LEDs. Also has a clip in so that you can set your gains. And there's additionally a clip output, which shows you 0.5% blue, 5% violet, and 10% for red for your output THD. Again, the low-pass filter and high-pass filter have times 10 adjustments as well, so you can go variable frequencies. Also, the bass boost and the frequency is variable. They call this one the powerhouse, and for good reason. We've already talked about the power output, but the big numbers to look at are the 1-ohm stereo 3200 by 2 and 2-ohms bridge 6000 by 1. So let's fire up the amp dyno, and we will find out if these numbers are true or not. If you've not seen these tests before, on the left, you'll see the power output. In the middle, you see the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote indicator so we can calculate efficiency. Let's fire it up and get that test going. This here's my favorite part. First up, we'll run the 4 ohm stereo test. It's rated 1200 watts by 2 at 14.4. Let's do the certified test first, a 1% distortion. And we get 1392 and 1380 at around 14.42, so right at the rated voltage, we get over 100 watts more power, uncertified to clipping, and it's virtually identical, 1390, 1379 at 14.42. And we'll try the dynamic test here. Send it a pulse tone into the amp. Not much difference here, 1383, 1382 at 14 and a half volts. Let's check that efficiency real quick. Very nice, 86% at four ohm stereo. Next up, we'll try two ohm stereo where the amplifier is rated 2000 watts by two at 14.4 volts. 
Here we go, certified test first, 1% distortion. We're using a one kilohertz track and it stops and jumps. <laughs> it does get over 2000 watts, but it did stop there a little bit before that. So what we did is we ran the test again at 40 hertz and you can see here it gets well above uh, 2300, 2349 and 22, 2325, right at 14.4 volts. So it does the rated power, no problem. Let's try it uncertified up to clipping. This is the one kilohertz track. And again, virtually the same as the other test, 2320, 2279. Then we'll try the dynamic test here, one kilohertz. And pushing 2600 watts, 2591, 2594, 14.26. Let's check that efficiency at the 40 hertz tone. And we got 79% at two ohm stereo. Next up, we'll have the amp at one ohm stereo. Again, 3,200 watts by two is what it's rated. This is essentially two 3,000 watt mono blocks inside of one amp. But you can see here, using the one kilohertz tone, we did not get it to count cleanly up at uh, that particular test for certified. So again, we reset it and we're trying it at 40 hertz and we didn't have any issue at all with it counting up and we got above the rate of power, 3269, 3253 at 13.9 volts. So let's try the uncertified test. Again, we're dropping well below the 14.4, 3353, 3371. And then we'll try the dynamic test here, one ohm per channel. And we're getting close to 5,000 watts at 14.8. Voltage is kind of high because we are using the lithium bank, but 47.34 and 49.83 dynamically. And we'll try the dynamic test here using the 40 hertz track just as a comparison. And we're still over 4,400 watts at 13.85, closer to 4,500 there. Efficiency dropped 69% at one ohm stereo. Now again, the amp is two channels, but it is bridgeable. So it's like having two mono blocks that you can strap. So we're gonna try it here. Four ohms bridge, it's rated 4,000 watts, 14.4 volts. We're doing the 40 Hertz test on all these. There's no issues here with the counting. 4650 at 14 and a half volts. We'll try the uncertified test now up to clipping. Here we go, again, 40 Hertz track. Getting a little more, 4767 right at 14.4 volts. Finally, we will do the dynamic test here with the 40 Hertz pulse track. And look at this, over 5,000, then it goes into over, which means that's over 5,000 watts. Can't measure any higher than that on the amp dyno. We measured 76% efficiency using the mono test, four ohms at 40 Hertz. And finally, two ohms rated 6,000 watts at 14.4. Have the amp bridge mono again running 40 hertz track certified test first 6663 watts at 13.99 volts easily meets the rated power and more uncertified up to clipping and we get 6861 watts at 13.77 volts finally here we'll run the dynamic test send in the pulse tone and check this out it's going up 8914 watts 14.69 efficiency we measured 67 percent at two ohms mono 40 hertz here are all the results we just showed all the different tests you can pause this if you want to see the individual tests the efficiency and all that of course we will note that the one kilohertz track with two ohm stereo as well as one ohm stereo we did get some funkiness in the counting in the certified test i did not hear this when i listened to it with speakers but uh, just to let you know it did happen when I asked the purpose of this amp, I was told it's designed for mids and highs and large systems, which I uh, don't have any way to kind of show that. But what I am going to show is it powering the quad box. Let's see how it does with bass.
I must note for those who don't know, when you see woofers flex like that, it's cool, but you can also get a whole lot of output without the woofers moving at the tuning frequency. So in the earlier test, it was very loud, it's just you couldn't tell because the woofers weren't moving that much. Now let's move on to the watts inside section where we're gonna talk about the thermals and internals. We'll check it out here with the FLIR. Of course, we're gonna see the hottest part of the amp is gonna be those chokes on the output section. Not too bad though. So let's take off this bottom Lexan panel, which we already had it off for the FLIR section, by the way. I'm just showing you how to take it off. And uh, we'll flip it over here because we didn't want to unplug the fan and do the flyover. You can see the four transformers. Also, you can see all the output uh, capacitors there. For the input filtering, we have 3300 microfarad, 25 volt. These are the Capson branded. The Sam Haas, 160 volt, 1800 microfarad for the outputs. And this is a powerhouse, my friends. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of this red amplifier from Down for Sound. First up, straight out of South Korea. It does make rated power, dual 1 0 inputs. Tiffany RCA's inputs and outputs has crossover flexibility, low pass, high pass, and band pass. Has remote bass level control with all the fancy features and the new LED THD indicators for the output. Now for the things to be aware of, over 700 amps of draw, of course, with it loaded down, requires beefy electrical. The one kilohertz test did not count cleanly at two ohm stereo or one ohm stereo. Nothing that I could hear though in the speakers, but it is something to note. The power input layout has the positives in the center, the negatives on the outside, the generic capacitors we've seen before, and big power equals big money. And that's relatively speaking, of course, because back in the day, an amp like this would have cost you thousands of dollars. Today is under a thousand. So it's pretty impressive overall, designed for mids and highs, but works with subwoofers too if you need it. Till next time, this Big D, I'm out of here. This is not a recommended test. The amp is not rated under uh, two ohms bridged, which puts a one ohm load per channel, but we're gonna try one ohm bridge, which is half an ohm per channel, dynamic burst, 40 Hertz, and hopefully it doesn't go up in the smoke. And you gotta check these power wires flexing. Look at this, look close, you can see them. Surgeon! 12,605, 13.65.